Hi everybody. Today I want to talk about notions of masculine and feminine. Uh, I want to start off with Carl Jung's idea of the anima and the animus. I haven't read a lot of Carl Jung because he's quite difficult, but I have heard about the anima and the animus talked about a lot, so I'll give you my understanding of it. For example, if you're a man, you carry around an image of woman. It's called the anima, and I'm calling it woman with a capital W because it's an archetype of woman. And if you're a woman, you carry around an, an image of man, capital M, man. So uh, there's a philosopher named Sam Keen. He wrote a book called Fire in the Belly on being a man. He talks about how it's important, let's say you're a heterosexual man or woman, I'll give the example of a man. If you're a heterosexual man, it's really important to chip away at this um, image that you have of woman, capital W, um, that you may have gotten from your mother, your aunt, your grandmother, your sister, all the women that you've encountered, um, media portrayals of women, and they're blocking an actual understanding of particular real living women uh, because you you see the, these real women through the filter of the anima. So um, it, as you get to know particular women um, and as you get to know yourself better and uh, chip away is the phrase I've been using but uh, basically bring into consciousness, articulate, express your notions of what it means to be a woman um, and what the feminine is. As you bring these into consciousness, you're able to see things more clearly, see people more clearly especially. So for example, recently I went on a men's retreat and uh, there were 45 men in total and it was wonderful to see men express along the whole emotional spectrum. So I saw examples of compassion, kindness, support, care, uh, as well as examples of irritation, examples of body humor, um, the whole range, and it was wonderful. I came away from that retreat weekend feeling I don't need to look to women to meet many, any of my needs. I don't need to look to anybody to meet my needs. But prior to that weekend, I had a certain sense that, call it a stereotype of women, or an expectation of women, that they should be nurturing, that they can provide me with a compassion that I need, an understanding that I need, sensitivity, um, Women are more connected and expressive of their feelings than men. So, basically, I'd, I'd been operating from this construct of, you can call it the ideal woman, or the woman archetype. So, in a similar way, a heterosexual woman might have a notion of the ideal man that is shaped by all the men that she's encountered in media portrayals of men. So, um, our ability to relate to each other as human beings beyond gender is one of the challenges that we face. And uh, just as all of the other marks and forms of discrimination, um, skin color, so-called race, um, racialization specifically, um, discrimination based on religion, excuse me, um, discrimination based on disability, um, all the varieties of discrimination that we have. Gender is, of course, another one of them. And um, the goal is to be able to relate to each other as human beings and experience the fullness of our personalities, regardless of what gender we identify as um, or what the other person identifies as. So um, Carl Jung also said something interesting in terms of 
integrating the self. So he said that each person needs to integrate the masculine and feminine energies within them, themselves. Um, a wonderful image of this is the Tao. So it's configured as yin and yang energy. Um, I'm sure you've seen those two teardrop shapes. One is black, one is white. And they each contain a touch of the other. Well, I go so far as to say that if we viewed each other fully as human beings and allowed each other full emotional expression, the difference between the genders would not be as great as it tra traditionally has been. I think one of the reasons that the, the differences between genders has been emphasized is because men have been afraid of um, seeing the so-called more feminine side of men because that would um, make them view these more feminine men as women and perhaps then become more attracted to them. I think this is another reason why transvestism, as it's been called, a term I don't like, essentially gender fluidity has been discouraged because uh, if you have a really good looking woman who's actually a man, uh, and by that I mean has a male body, um, and you're a, uh, what you, you identify as a straight man, you find yourself attracted to this woman, who pre person who's presenting as a woman, you're going to have to question your sexual orientation if you know that that person is male and you've said to yourself, no, I'm not attracted to male bodies, you're going to have to question that. So, for example, the movie The Crying Game did a great job of playing with our expectations, our, our sense of what is attractive, um, by revealing that a character that we thought was a woman actually has a male body. So, I think that one of the reasons why um, so-called cross-dressing, another term I don't like, by men has been discouraged is that if the person cross-dresses really well and it so-called passes as a woman, then men will be afraid that they are attracted to another man. And you couldn't have that. Homophobia was rampant. Um, has been rampant in, in cultures around the world. At different times, it kind of moves through peaks and valleys. Um, it's also a, another reason why gender fluidity among men has been discouraged, because women have been seen as a lesser sex. So for men to feminize has been considered um, a way of being inferior, of associating with an inferior being. Uh, so that kind of, for men to wear dresses or skirts or heels, makeup, um, has been seen as taboo because for, for two reasons. Um, to sum up, the first one being homophobia um, and the other one being uh, sexism. So we live in a time where fortunately, a time and place, um, in the West today where men can express as they want, they can wear dresses and skirts um, much more freely than in the past, although as I said, this too went through peaks and valleys. Um, in, in, in cities, in large cities for example, we have the phenomena of drag queens, sometimes even in small towns, and um, that's considered acceptable. So I believe we're making progress. The enormous success of RuPaul's Drag Race um, it is, is, um, has really opened up uh, a revolution for drag. Um, I believe there is a women's revolution, the women's movement, suffragettes and the women's right to vote. Um, then there was a, a trans revolution. Um, and a gay revolution, the whole LGBTQ um, revolution. Uh, and then after that, there was, with RuPaul, I would say a drag revolution, and now we're going through 
especially among youth, a gender fluid revolution, um, where young people are identifying as agender, gender creative, gender non-binary, um, and it's just a wonderful time to be alive in that respect. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I've talked a lot about how to relate with people of other genders, specifically um, how men can view women in in a less uh, filtered way, and how women can view men in in those ways. But beyond the binary, it, it's often people who are gender fluid who um, who are able to see um, others as as human, as fully human and beyond gender, um, because they've thought through and felt their way through gender themselves. Um, and so this video has been about relating between um, different gendered beings, different humans, and also um, expressing gender within. And I've specifically talked about men, because in the liberal democracies, Women have a lot of freedom as to how to dress. They can wear pants, they can wear skirts. They have freedom in terms of their expression of anger as well as their expression of sadness. Whereas men are primi primarily encouraged to um, either feel neutral, not express any feelings in particular, or express um, aggression, anger, dominance, conquest. Um, and, and not be melancholy, sad, droopy, because those, those feelings are often feminized. Depression, for example. So, um, the video has been about relating with um, people of, of other genders, as well as relating to yourself and how you uh, express along the gender spectrum the full range, both in terms of presentation um, from pants to dresses as well as um, emotional expression. Okay? Thanks for watching.